with ano na po? intangible assets. So, si intangible asset, basic definition po muna. Okay, basic definition ng intangible assets natin. Identifiable non-monetary asset. Identifiable non-monetary asset okay, without physical substance. So, the best, ay parang, the main distinguishing feature of intangible asset is it lacks physical existence. Diba? So, kaya nga siya intangible. Diba? Yun lang naman yung constant. Okay. Yun yung magdi-distinguish sa kanya from other assets. O recognition. O yung basic recognition principle applicable. Yung future economic benefits will flow to the entity. The cost can be measured reliably. And then in addition to that, in-specify niya po yung control. Okay? O, parang biological asset. Anong sabi natin dun sa biological asset? Anong indicator na kontrolado mo yung asset? Sabi na, Okay. If you can obtain economic benefits from the use of the asset, and at the same time you can prohibit others from obtaining, okay, from obtaining economic benefits or ay na future economic benefits from the asset, then malamang sa iyo yung asset. Ay nakakakuha ka, tas na pipigilan mo pa yung iba, o baka sa iyo yon. Gets po ba? Okay. And then at the same time, okay, isa sa pinaka mahirap gawin, no, sa intangible assets would be uh, yung uh, separability okay? yung, or sorry, yung identifiability so, paano mo ma-establish yung identifiability ng intangible asset? una, yung sa separability niya with other assets and then at the same time okay, identifiable yan okay, mas madaling ma-establish yung identifiability kapag nag-aaray siya sa contractual right or legal right diba? so ano yung mga intangible asset na may na i-grant to contractual right? Best example, franchise. Legal right, patent, trademarks, copyright. Nasusundan mo yun. So, ayun. Uh, pagka existing yan, okay, then you can recognize the asset as intangible asset. Okay pa? Okay pa rin. pa tayo. Dapat masaya ka lang, di ba? Ayan. Sige, huwag masyadong malungkot. Ang, ano. Next po. Measurement. Measurement po ng intangible asset. Initially, all intangible assets should be recognized at cost. Parang PPE lang to, at cost. O, subsequent, subsequent, o, the entity, pwede niyang gamitin ng ano, cost model or revalued amount model. O, parang PPE. O, yun nga lang, limited siya sa revalued amount model. You can, sabi ni standards, ano, you can only use the revalued amount model if there is an active market that exists. Okay? There is an active market with, uh, there is an active market trading for the intangible asset. Nasundan mo. So, pagka may active market, may option siya. Mag-cost model or mag-revalued amount model. Pero pag walang active market, automatic ano siya? Cost model lang. Nasundan mo? Okay. So, yun ha. Next po. So, ano po ba yung, uh, paano yung mga different means of acquiring intangible assets. So, una, syempre, acquisition. Diba? Pwede ka naman bumili ng ano yan, ng, uh, ng intangible assets. So, best example, franchise. Diba? O, paano? Ano ang capitalizable sa intangible asset pagka bumili ka ng franchise? Kasi, kung ano yung kinakapitalize natin sa inventories, yun lang rin yun. So, purchase price at saka yung mga directly attributable costs. Nasundan? O, next. Ano ba? Another way of obtaining intangible asset would be Oh, yung mga part of business combination. Actually, acquisition rin yun. Okay, so, ano yung mga intangible asset na pwede mo ma-acquire through business combination? So, lahat ng identifiable, patent, copyright, trademark, pwede mong bilhin yun. Na susundan yan. And then, at the same time, pwede ka rin po magkaroon ng goodwill. Di ba? So, yung goodwill na nag-arise from business combination, yun allowed to be recognized as intangible asset. Nasundan po ba? Okay, next. Pero yung mga patent, o, oh, normal naman na nire-recognize yan. O, oh, pwede ka rin maka-obtain ng intangible asset through donation. O, oh, example, binigyan ka ng government grant allowing you to, uh, to, to, ano, to exercise certain rights, okay, na nag-qualify sa, uh, na, na nag-qualify as intangible asset. Sabi niya, if may fair value, i-capitalize mo at fair value. Paano kung walang fair value? O sige, mag-assign ka ng nominal amount. Kapag nominal amount, magkano? Pwedeng piso, basta ma-recognize siya, basta mapunta sa libro. Nasusundan po ba? 
Okay, tas oh, pagka zero talaga, tingnan mo, baka mayroong mga directly attributable cost, yun yung i-capitalize mo. Nasusundan. Pero pag may fair value, normally wala na yung directly attributable cost kasi it's a charge mo na yung dun sa donated capital or just sa income from government grants. Nalala ba yun? Yes? Okay, next. Ano pa po? Exchange. So, yung concept na inaral mo sa exchange ng PPE, same concepts lang rin po. Ano? And then, the last mode would be, okay, intangible assets may be internally generated. Okay? So, oh, pagka internally generated, normally po yung cost of registration, yun yung mga capitalizable. Oh, tapos, mas maganda malaman natin kung ano yung mga specific intangible assets na pag internally generated, they are not allowed to be recognized. Oh, ano pong mga example ng internally generated as intangible assets not allowed for recognition? Number one, goodwill. Diba? Ano pa? Sabi niya, brands, mastheads, publishing titles. Okay? Ano pa? Customers list. Yan. Kasi ito, hindi mo ma-identify kung hanggang kailan ka mag o obtain ng benefit. So, parang ano siya? Parang concept ng advertising. So, i-expense mo na lang. Huwag mo nang i-capitalize. Nasundan yun. So, ulit ha? Okay, brands, masthead, publishing titles, customers list. Okay ba? Okay, next. We proceed. So, dun sa subsequent, di ba, cost model, revalued among model, pero mas common, cost model. So, pag naka-cost model, ano po ang valuation? Caring, uh, caring amount, di ba? Paano mag-compute ng caring amount? Cost, less accumulated amortization, less accumulated impairment losses. Nasusundan yun. Okay, so paano po yung sa amortization? Uh, yung amortization, ang unang magdi-distinguish dyan is kung finite ba or indefinite. Uh, definite or indefinite yung useful life, di ba, nung intangible asset. Pagka definite ang useful life, okay, i-amortize mo. Pero pag indefinite, ano ginagawa natin? Indefinite intangible assets are not subject to amortization. Nasusundan, ano sila? Subject po siya for impairment testing. Nasusundan po ba? Ano po yun? Okay. So, sige. Apply natin muna yung mga basic concepts na yan okay, sa problem number one. O, parang identification lang muna ng intangible assets. Ano yung mga common? Okay, tapos yun, may pag-apply rin tayo nung sa amortization later. Ha? O, sige. Number one. Anong hiningi? What total amount should be reported as intangible assets? Franchise. Capitalizable po ba? Or intangible assets po ba yan? Yes. Computer software. Intangible asset? Yes. Diba? Patent? Yes. Customers list? O, kailan ito hindi ka-capitalize? Pagka internally generated. Eh, hindi naman yung specify. So, the presumption, binili yan. Okay? So, capitalize. Uh, intangible asset. Copyright? Intangible asset. Deposit with advertising agency to promote goodwill. Nagbayad ka in advance. At di prepayments yan. Diba? Hindi intangible asset yan. Okay, next. Excess cost over fair value of identifiable net asset of acquired associate. So, mas mataas yung acquisition mo than fair value of net asset acquired. Di ba may goodwill doon? Oh, intangible asset po ba yun? Yes or no? At siya po would be no. Bakit? Kasi di ba not separately accounted yun? Part siya nung capitalizable investment in associate. Di ba? Nandun siya, hindi siya inihiwalay doon. Included siya nung investment in aso account. Did you get this? Okay, next. So, not separately accounted yung goodwill dyan. O, let, uh, next item. Excess of cost over fair value of identifiable net asset of acquired subsidiary. So, of acquired subsidiary. So, ano siya? Okay, so, nire-recognize by goodwill? Yes. Diba? Pagka uh, subsidiary. Okay? So, Recognize natin. Ito yung sa business ko. Trademark. Intangible asset. Yes. R&D. Anong treatment ng R&D? Generally, it's expense. No? So, answer po is letter. Ano? So, 1 million plus 1.5 plus 2.5 plus 500 plus 700 plus 4 million plus 900. Nasundan? So, magkano pong total? 11.5 1 million. So, letter A. Nasundan yan. Okay, next. Yung letter B, ito po illustration ng different ways of calculating goodwill. So, paano po ba tayo nagka-calculate ng goodwill? 
Oh, ang goodwill mo, may dalawang approaches dyan. No? So, nandyan yung residual, ito yung mas popular. Oh, yung ginagawa natin sa ano, sa investment in ASO, sa uh, business combination, di ba? Acquisition cost, acquisition cost less, ano po? Oh, yung common muna, carrying amount of net asset acquired. Oh, tas may value dyan, di ba? May lalabas na, kung may positive pa, o oh, excess, Tapos, ano po, i-review -re natin yung fair value, di ba? If fair value of the asset is greater than the carrying amount, okay, or understated yung asset, o, dahil ang binibili mo fair value, gawasan mo yung excess. Di ba? O, pero kung ang fair value ay less than the carrying amount, o, pag asset yan, ibig sabihin, overstated yung asset, di ba? So, sobra yung ibinawas. Balik mo. Gets po ba? Okay, Next. O, tas pag layup, syempre balikta rin mo lang ha? O, tas eto, di ba may resulting figure dyan Pag positive, goodwill Nalala mo yun? Pag negative, ano siya? Gain from bargain purchase, right? Yun. O, tas sabi natin, pwede mo itong i-cut short, di ba? Paano yung shortcut nito? Acquisition cost Less, ano po? Fair value of net asset acquired Fair value of net asset acquired. Matapos, yun rin. Pag positive, good win. Pag negative, gain from bargain purchase. Did you get this? O, diba? Common to sa atin, right? Okay, next. O, meron rin naman tayo mga direct approaches. Yan. Direct approaches. So, paano po yan? So, yung sa direct approaches po, pwede niyang bilhin kasi o purchase. O, purchase of average excess earnings. Yan. So, yung purchase of average excess earnings, pwede niya pong gawin yan, pwede niya bilhin yan na ano, discounted. Pagka discounted, may present value considerations lang. Or, undiscounted. So, pagka undiscounted, kung magkano yung average excess earnings, depende sa number of years na binibili, multiply mo lang. Diba? So, walang discounting na lang gawin. Okay, next. O, pwede rin naman yan na ano, bilhin po yung, per, uh, yung purchase of average earnings. Yan. Purchase of average earnings. O, similar, pwedeng discounted or undiscounted. Pero, dun sa illustration natin, undiscounted lang. Okay? Pero pwede ha, pwede kahit undiscounted dyan. O, next. Ano pa? Pwede rin pong capitalization of Average excess earnings. Capitalization of average excess earnings. So, paano niya gagawin yan? We'll be illustrating that in a bit. Huh? And then, pwede rin naman na ano, i-capitalize daw natin okay, yung average earnings. Average earnings. Okay, so paano niya po ginagawa yung direct approach okay, or direct approaches? Okay, pakita natin through problem number 2. Okay, so tignan mo ha, sa problem na, ay dun sa direct approaches, ano yung dalawang kailangan mong data? Diba? Kailangan mo ng average excess earnings at saka average earnings. O, paano po yan? Yung average earnings mo, ano lang yan? O, average income, di ba? So, depende sa number of years na consider for calculation. Ayan. Tapos, para makompute ang average excess earnings, from the average earnings, we deduct the normal earnings. Pag nag-invest ka, magkano yung normal na kikitain mo. And then, o, yan na yung average excess earnings. Nasundan po ba ito? So, yan. So, illustrate natin by answering problem two. An entity is planning to sell the business to new interests. The cumulative net earnings for the past five years amounted to 16.5, including expropriation loss of 1.5. The normal rate of return is 20%. The fair value of net assets of the entity at current year end was 10 million. So what is the amount of goodwill if? Dibili nga kanil mga conditions. So, i-determine muna natin ito. Magkano po ang average earnings? O, pag nagko-compute ka ng average earnings, syempre, dapat yung usual lang. Di ba? Yung usual lang. Clear po ba? Okay, so, kaya kung merong mga unusual gains, unusual losses, 
Okay? Dapat, tanggalin mo yung effects nun. So, kung gain yan, ibawas natin. Kung loss yan, add back mo. So, in this case, tignan mo, magkano yung income niya for the last 5 years daw? Cumulative was 16.5. Pero, may expropriation loss na unusual, 1.5. Okay? So, add back natin yun, divided by 5 years. Nagets mo siya? O, kasi average yung earnings natin. So, magkano ito? 3.6. Okay? O, normal earnings. Magkano po ang normal earnings? O, normal earnings... Sabi niya, o, sa market, kumikita ng 20%. Eh, magkano kailangan invest sa kumpanya? Magkano yung value ng kumpanya? 10 million. So, kung mag-invest siya ng 10 million, dapat kumita siya ng 2 million. Nagets mo yan? So, ang excess earnings po would be 1.6. Nasundan yan? Okay. So, for number 1, anong sabi niya sa number 1? Purch uh, purchase of excess earnings for 5 years. So, that's undiscounted. Wala naman sinabing i-discount. So, magkano ang excess earnings? 1.6. O, multiplied by 5. O, simple as that. Diba? So, magkano po? O, resulting figure, goodwill na. So, magkano ang goodwill? 8 million. Nasundan? Okay. Next, number 2. Anong sabi? Excess earnings are capitalized at 25%. So, paano po yun? Pagka capitalization, goodwill would be equal to, ano ba? Okay. Average excess earnings of 1.6 divided by capitalization rate of 25%. So, 1.6 divided by 0.25, magkano yan? Ha? 6,400,000. 'Yan na yung goodwill mo. Nasusundan po ako. O next. O diba, simple lang. No? O basta po pagka average excess earnings yung basis mo, ang resulting figure palagi, goodwill na. Okay, pag average earnings nito. Let ha, pag excess na ang basis, lagi yung resulting figure goodwill. Okay? O tingnan natin bakit hindi yung kapag ka average earnings ang gano'n. O number three. Annual average earnings are purchased for 3 years. So, magkano average earnings? Average earnings, 3.6. O, binili na lang times 3. So, ito. Magkano po? 10.8. Nasa dahil, o, what if tinanong ka, magkano ang total na babayaran sa number 3? Total acquisition cost total acquisition cost 20 million 800 kasi yung goodwill 10.8 yung fair value ng business 10 million di ba sabi natin acquisition cost minus fair value goodwill gets po ba so parang ini squeeze lang ha okay next o number 4 tingnan mo po yung number 4 anong sabi sa number 4 annual average earnings are capitalized at 25% Opo, uh, ito po yun. Uh, pagka kinapitalize mo ang average earnings, ang makakalculate po natin is what? Okay, ang makakalculate mo po would be yung fair value ng business including goodwill. So, fair value ng business. So, hindi lang goodwill. Diba? So, in this case, magkano po ang fair value ng business? Magkano yung average earnings? 3.6 tas Ika-capitalize at 25%. So, the fair value, including goodwill, is how much? 14 million 400. Eh, tapos, gusto mong i-compute ang goodwill. Itanggalin mo yung fair value ng business. Magkano yung fair value ng business? Without the goodwill, 10 million. Okay, so magkano ang goodwill? 4 point? Nasundan mo siya. Pagka, pagka excess earnings, whether purchase yan or capitalization, goodwill na yung resulting figure. Pero pag average earnings, pag capitalization, hindi goodwill. Yung value ng business yung, yung acquisition cost yung uh, makocompute mo. Gets po ba? Uh, next, number five. Anong sabi niya? 
excess earnings are discounted at 12% for 5 years. So, magkano ang excess earnings? O, oh, ito, discounted lang. Ano? 1.6 multiplied by, ano ba? 3.6. Okay, so magkano ito? 5 million, 760. So, 5 million, 760. Nasundan po ba? So, these are um, illustrations of calculation using direct approaches. Yung problem number 3, illustration naman po yan ng ano, residual approach. Okay, so, fair ba, uh, carrying amount, uh, sorry, acquisition cost, less fair value of net asset acquired. So, tingnan natin. What amount should be reported as goodwill? On December 31, 2018, an apparent entity purchase for 45 million all of the following outstanding shares of a subsidiary with net assets of 32 million. Subsidiary assets and liabilities on the date of acquisition are So, ano na na-identify mo? Acquisition cost mo daw is 45 million. O, tapos, binigyan ka. The carrying amount of net asset to be acquired, magkano daw po? 30 2 million. So, meron kagad excess na magkano? 13 million. So, ano gagawin natin? I-review mo yung fair value at saka carrying amount, di ba? Yung mga recorded items sa FS. Okay, so, una, yung PPE niya, okay, yung PPE, so, asset to, magkano ang fair value? 57.5. Magkano carrying amount? 50 million. So, understated siya. Anong binibili muli? Fair value. So, bawasan natin. Say, understated. Nasundan? Next po, other assets. So, for other assets, magkano ang carrying amount? 5 million. Magkano ang fair value? Zero. So, ano siya? Over. So, sobra yung binawas. Balik natin. Nasusundan doon? O, yung liabilities, magkano? O, di ba? Yung liabilities overstated. O, balik na rin mo lang. So, yung asset na over, na-add natin yung over na liab, ibawas natin. Nasundan para medyo ma-minimize yung analysis. Ano? Okay. Next. So, magkano po ang magiging resulting figure? How much is the resulting figure, please? Magkano po? 8.5. Nasundan? So, that would be your goodwill. Or, yung normal na ginagawa mo sa gusto. So, actually, mas madali nga pag residual approach kasi may training talaga tayo sa, di ba? Ayaw mo manuala, syempre. Ayan. O, next. O, number four. O, eto na, mga unti-unti, uh, no? Nagkakaroon ng specific examples ng mga intangible assets. So, for number four, o, eto, anong tatamaan niyang intangible assets? Actually, 4, 5, and 6. So, tatamaan niya po dyan would be patent. Okay, sa patent, oh, for patent, ano yan? Oh, uh, Knowledge-based na intangible asset. Kasi, di ba, magkakaroon ka ng patent pagka nagkaroon ka ng inventions. Tapos, paparegister mo. Di ba? Okay, so, ayun. So, ano po ang legal life ng patent? Kasi makaka-affect yan sa amortization later on. Eh. Ilang taon ang legal life ng patent? Recall lang. Answer? 20. Okay, 20 years. So, pa paano amortization ng patent? Useful life or legal life, whichever is shorter. Okay? Whichever is shorter. Okay? Next. O, ito ang mga paborito sa patent. Anong capitalizable cost ng patent? O, normally, pagka binili mo, syempre, acquisition cost, di ba? O, pagka ni-register mo yan, ano, hindi yung cost ng registration, di ba? Yung requirement ng regulator when it comes to patent. Ano pa? Another favorite item sa patent po, yung ano, yung legal fees na na-incur independent na patent. Okay, so, ayun. Ay, anong, anong concept lang dito? Pag po legal fees, regardless whether successful or unsuccessful, ano lang ang treatment. 
expense lang yan, walang kinakapitalize. Nasusundan mo yon. Pero kung yung legal fees related sa acquisition, yun pwede pa. Pero yung sa defense ng patent, expense lang. Clear? Clear yan. Next. Ano pa? Or what if you acquired a competitive patent? Oh, parang, oh, di ba, may patent ka, tas para protektahan, okay, yung patent mo, binili mo yung competitive uh, competitive patent. Yan. Yung another patent of another entity na potential na okay, makikipag-agawan. Diba? Doon sa benefits na, na related doon sa patent. Anong sabi niya pag competitive patent? Pag po competitive patent, o dahil protection lang siya ng original patent mo, edi i-amortize mo siya based on the remaining useful life of the original patent. Nasusundan mo siya. Nakuha, nakuha. Okay. Next. Paano naman kapag ka, nag-acquire ka ng related patent? Yan. Related patent. Pag po related patent, ang tanong lang muna, in-extend niya ba yung life ng original patent mo? If the answer is yes, okay, both of your patents, okay, both of your patents, okay, would be, ano po, would be amortized based on the extended useful life. Okay? Nasundan mo siya? Nakuha, nakuha? Yes? Okay, next. Pag po walang extension ng useful life, your two different patents will be amortized based on their own useful lives. Kanya-kanyang useful lives lang. Did you get this? So, pagka in-extend ang life, pagod na? Ay, na kayo. Parang iba yung lakas nyo pag-break. <laughs> pag kayo yung pag-break, di ba pag-break normally nagpapahinga? Hindi, mas malakas ka pag-break. And then, okay, balik tayo. So, pagka nag-extend ang life ulit, paano mo i-amortize yung dalawang patent? Based on the revised useful life or yung remaining useful life. Diba? Pagka naman walang extension, their own separate lives. Ang drama nun, no? O, basta, kanya-kanyang life. Kuha? Okay, next. So, sige. Apply natin itong mga concepts na to. Okay, tingnan natin kung ano yung mga capitalizable cost ng patent. Ano? Tapos yung R&D, maya-maya na, ha? Okay, so number four, what amount should be capitalized as cost of the patent? Yung first three items initially, no? yung first three items, those are expense po. R&D lahat yan. So, pakinote muna ha. R&D expenses po yan. Next, o oh, yung legal cost of filing patent, capitalizable po ba sa patent yan? Yes. Fees paid to government patent office. O related, di ba, dun sa acquiring the legal right. So, capitalizable. Drawings required by patent office to be filed with patent application. So, kailangan? Yes, capitalizable. Okay. Legal fees incurred in successful defense. Anong sabi? Regardless whether successful or unsuccessful, expense lang. So, ano lang ang kinapitalize natin? 300, 500, and 400. Did you get this? Yes. So, magkano pong capitalizable cost ng patent? 1.2. Nasundan po ba? Okay. Next, number... Okay, number 5. On January 1, 2018, an entity purchased... On January 1, 2016, an entity purchased a patent for 7140. The patent is being amortized over the remaining legal life of 15 years. During 2019, the entity determined that economic benefits of the patent would not last longer than 10 years from date of acquisition. So, ano ang concept? Diba? At paano mo i-treat to? Change in accounting? Estimate. So, prospective ka lang. Diba? Only the current and future periods will be uh, will be affected. Ano po? So, what is the carrying amount of the patent on December 31, 2019? So, diba? Pagka nagkaroon ng change, o kunin mo muna, diba? Kung magkano yung carrying amount dun sa date ng pagbabago. Okay, so, magkano po ang cost? 7... 140. Magkano ang accumulated amortization niya? Accumulated amortization would be magkano? So 7140 next minus salvage value. Meron po ba? Wala naman binanggit kasi nga sabi natin generally generally wala siyang salvage value. Kailan nagkaka-salvage value ang intangible asset? Pag po may commitment from third party that they will be acquiring the property at the end of its useful life. 
yun yung pwede mag-serve as salvage value. Or, if there is an active market that will uh, that can be used, okay, uh, or we can trade, uh, if there is an active market or we can trade the intangible asset after the useful life, pwede yun. Pwede kang may salvage value. So, generally, ha, wala siyang salvage value. Okay? So, balikan natin yung example. So, ilang years i-amortize sa yung 7140 originally? 15 years. Kaya lang, ilang taon mo na siyang ginamit? 2016, 2017, 2018. So, that would be 3 years. Nakuha? So, magkano accumulated amortization? 1,428,000. Nasundan? Okay, so magkano po ang carrying amount ng January 1, 2019? Magkano po? 5 million 712. Next. Tapos nagkaroon ng changes. So magkano ang amortization? Okay, December 31, 2019. Kasi carrying amount yung hinihingi. Diba? So, o si 7140. So, kailangan mo magkano ang amortization ng 2019. So, 2019 amortization, anong i-amortize mo na lang? Yung 5,712,000 divided by remaining useful life. Ilang taon pa ang remaining useful life? Diba? Yung 15 naging 10 from the date of acquisition, eh nagamit mo na for 3 years. So, ilang taon na lang to? 7. So, magkano po ang amortization for 2019? 800 16. Okay. So, magkano accumulated amortization for 2019? December 31. So, 1,428 na beginning balance plus yung 816. Nasundan po ba yan? Nakuha, nakuha? Yes. So, magkano to? 2,244. Okay pa? So, 7,140 minus 2,244 magkano po? 4,896. So, ito yung hinahanap, di ba? So, answer po would be letter B. Bravo. O, di ba? So, anong concept yan? Ina-amortize. Paano mag-amortize? And then, at the same time, okay, paano pag may changes, itreat mo lang as change in accounting estimates. Okay? Next. Number 6. Anong hinahanap sa number 6? What is the total carrying amount of intangible assets on January 1, 2019? What is the amount of total expenses for 2019 in relation to intangible assets? On January 1, 2019, an entity reported patent costs of 1,920,000 and related accumulated amortization of 240. So, sige. Kasi hinihingi eh, January 1. So, yung patent, magkano daw po ang carrying amount? Ang cost ay 1,920,000. Ang accumulated amortization, magkano? 240. So, magkano po ang carrying amount? 1,680. Okay? So, the patent was purchased on January 1, 2017, at which date the remaining legal life was 16 years. Tama kaya yung 240 na debt? Tignan mo, 1920 ang cost. Ilan ang legal life daw? 16. So, 1920 divided by 16. Ilang taon mo nang ginamit? 2 years. 2017, 2018. So, magkano po ang accumulated amortization? 240. So, bangga yung ibinigay sa'yo. So, kahit na hindi niya ibigay yung 240, kaya mo yung i-calculate, right? Okay, next. On January 1, 2019, the useful life of the patent was do, was determined to be only 8%. Ay, sorry. <laughs> Pag kayo nag-preboard. Paglabas nun, nandun ako. Na joke lang. Ayan, sige. So, the useful life of the patent was determined to be only 8 years from the date of acquisition. So, ilang taon mo na siyang ginamit? 2 years. So, yung remaining, okay, yung remaining carrying amount, okay, yun na, yun na lang yung, i-amortize na lang natin siya for 6 years. So, 1,680 
Okay, 1680 divided by 6. So, magkano po ito? Magkano po ang magiging expense? 280. Yan, kasi inahanap, di ba? O, next. On January 1, 2019, the entity paid 800,000 of which 3 fourths was for trademark and 1 fourth was for other entities' agreement not to compete for a 5-year period in the line of business covered by the trademark. Okay, so parang protection ng trademark mo, di ba? So, trademark, intangible asset. Anong legal life ng trademark? Kasi yun yung mga ano eh. Lahat familiar kayo. Ilan, ilan? O, 10 years, tas renewable lang. Kaya yung trademark generally, ano siya? Okay, indefinite. Kaya nire-renew lang. So, pagka indefinite, hindi subject sa amortization, pero uh, subject to impairment testing. Okay, so, yun, may trademark. So, January 1, 2019, di ba inihingi yung carrying amount? So, magkano carrying amount ng trademark mo? Three-fourths daw, so that would be 600. Tapos yung non-compete agreement, o dapat ihiwalay mo kasi yung trademark indefinite. Yung non-compete agreement for five years lang. So, eto, i-amortize mo siya. Di ba? So, 200,000. Gets po ba? Okay, next. Next po. So, the entity considered the life of the trademark indefinite. Okay, so ano lang ang may amortization? So, amortization nung non-compete agreement, magkano? So, 200,000 good for 5 years, di ba? So, every year, for the next 5 years, mag expense ka ng 40. Next po. Moreover, the entity agreed to pay 50,000 to the other entity as consulting fee each year for 5 years payable every January 1. So, anong treatment mo dun sa 50,000 na consultancy? Okay? So, expense lang yan. Di ba? So, ngayon. So, another expense. So, you know, parang mga continuing fees, ano? So, expenses incurred lang po yan. Okay? Next. Wala na. So, magkano total carrying amount ng intangible asset ng January 1? So, eto. 1,680, 600, at saka 200. So, magkano po yan? 2,480,000. Nasundan? O paano kung hiningi sa'yo December 31? Anong gagawin mo? 2,480, ibawas mo yung 2,80 at saka 40. Diba kasi, ito magiging 1,60, ito magiging 1,680 minus 2,80, 1,4. Nasundan yun? Pag December 31, ha? Kaya lang hiningi sa atin, ano, January 1. Okay? O total expense na nirecognize natin, 280, 40, and 50. So, for a total of 370,000. 370,000. Okay po ba? Next. Ito, impairment po ng, okay, ng problem 7 is an illustration ng impairment ng okay, intangible asset. So, paano po ulit ang impairment? Carrying amount versus recoverable amount. Tignan natin. So, on January 1, 2019, an entity acquired a trademark for 3 million. The trademark has 8 years remaining in the legal life. It is anticipated that the trademark will be renewed in the future indefinitely without problem. So, ano siya? Definite or indefinite? Indefinite, di ba? So, pag indefinite, hindi siya subject to amortization. Nasusundan po ba? So, magkano ang carrying amount niya nung itetest mo for impairment ng December 31, 2019? So, 3 million. Kasi hindi ka naman nag-amortize. Okay? Next. On December 31, 2019, the trademark is assessed for impairment. Because of a decline in economy, the trademark is expected to generate cash flows of just 120,000 annually. Oh, di ba? So, 120,000 annually. Eh, di ba, pagkaganyan, dapat ilang beses kang makakatanggap ng 120? Eh, ang, eh, ang problema, walang number of years. Di ba? Indefinite eh. So, paano po nag estimate pagkaganyan? O, paano tayo nagko-compute? Di ba, ang recoverable amount niya, pagkaganyan, value in use. So, yung present value ng cash flows na ma-generate from the use. O, kasi wala naman fair value less cost of those uh, disposal. 
Okay, paano po pag mag, paano mag-determine ng value news pag indefinite ang cash flows? All you have to do is to divide annual cash flows of 120,000 divided by okay, yung discount rate. Okay, so magkano ang magiging value in use niya? 2 million pesos. Nasundan po ba yun? Ganoon na, pagka-indefinite. O, impaired nga ba ang asset? Impaired, yes. Magkano pong impairment? O, 1 million pesos. So, 1 million pesos. Nasundan? So, answer for this one is letter K. Okay. Next po. O, yung problem numbers 8 and 9, ito po ay R&D. Ano ang concepts for R&D? General po muna ha. Yung R&D, lahat po ng research, okay, lahat ng research po, ayan, expense yan. Okay, ano yung, paano malalaman na expense, uh, na research yan? O basta nag aim ka for new knowledge, new technology, okay, nag identify ka ng possible alternative courses of options or uh, uh, nagpo-formulate ka, di ba, ng mga possible solutions. Ayan, research yun. And then, oh, papasok siya sa development. Ano ang pagkakaiba ng, siyempre, mas advanced ng development. Kung kanina, namimili, ah, nag-identify ka ng possible sources of, ah, ng possible solutions, okay, or nag-identify ka ng potential alternatives to solve a particular uh, problem or to invent a particular product, ayun, ang development, you will be applying the chosen alternative. Parang implement mo siya. Titignan mo kung effective ba o hindi. Tapos, once na may establish mo yung tinatawag na technical or technological feasibility, talagang pwede no, na maging asset eventual yan. Okay. Allowed ka ng mag-capitalize. So, pagka na-establish ang technical feasibility, yung development cost, ikakapitalize mo siya as intangible asset. So, then, oh, next. Tapos, once, okay, na magkaroon na ng commercial production, o oh, ibig sabihin, na-establish mo na yung product mismo. ba? So, sinasabi niya, no, once you have established yung product master, yung pagkokopyahan ng mga ire-reproduce. Okay? Ayun. Dahil may commercial production na, inventories na yan. Nasusundan po ba ito? Okay. So, same with computer software. Ganyan rin yung proseso. Okay. Hanggat hindi po pa na-establish ang technical feasibility, wala kang ikakapitalize. Pero once na ma-establish mo, intangible asset. Okay. Tapos, once na magsimula na yung commercial production, inventoryable na yan. Nasusundan po ba? Okay. Ngayon. Sige. Establish natin yung concepts ng R&D by answering yung items number 8 and 9. Uh, for number 8, oh, ito, what amount of R&D cost should be expensed in the current year? So, ano lang ang kinakapitalize? Pagkamay, technical feasibility. Diba? Okay, number eight, uh, 8, an entity incurred the following R&D costs in the current year. Materials used in R&D projects. Okay, ito? Yes. Equipment acquired that will have alter, uh, alternate future use in future research and development projects. So, anong treatment po? O dahil may alternative use yan, ikakapitalize mo yan as PPE. Kung wala siyang alternative future use, lahat po yan expense. Kahit na 5 years pa siya pwedeng gamitin. Nasundan? Nakuha, mga nakuha. O pero dahil may alternative future use, anong ginawa natin? PPE. Tapos, yung depreciation niya for the period, yun yung itreat mo na R&D. Nasusundan? Okay, so yun. Tapos tingnan mo yung sunod, di ba? Depreciation on above equipment. So, anong R&D cost? Hindi yung 2 million, but the 500. Gets? Okay, next. Personal cost of person involved in R&D projects. O, R&D, di ba? Cons consulting fees paid to outsiders for R&D projects. R&D, yes. Indirect costs, reasonably allocable to R&D uh, projects. Yes. Okay na. So, magkano po ang capitalizable? So, sa lahat, lahat ng amounts dyan, except for that, 2 million. So, anong sagot natin? 
400 plus 500 plus 1 million plus 100 plus 200 magkano po yun? 2.2 Okay, so answer po is letter C Next Tingnan mo to What amount of research and development should be reported in the current year? So expense ulit Laboratory research aimed at discovery of new knowledge So anong activity to? Research, di ba? Sinabi na eh, di ba? Okay, so expense ba yan? Yes Design of tools, jigs, mold and dice involving new technology. Development na yan. Diba? Kasi pinapattern mo na eh. Diba? So parang nagpa-practice ka na na mag-produce ng mga prototype. Diba? Okay. So ano to? Development cost expense. Next. Quality control during commercial production. O di ba sabihin na incur na to na may commercial production na. So ano siya? Inventoryable, hindi yan R&D Nasundan mo? Okay, next Equipment acquired 2 years ago Having an estimated useful life of 5 years With no residual value Used in various R&D projects So may alternative use? May alternative use? May alternative use? Yes, mayroon Sabi niya, di ba? Used in various projects Nasundan mo? So, magkano ang ye expense natin this year? Yung depreciation. Okay? So, magkano ba? 1,500 divided by, ilang taon daw siya? 5 years. So, 300,000. Did you get this? Okay, 300,000. Next, what if? O, tingnan mo, what if wala siyang alternative future use? Magkano ang ye expense mo for the period? Magkano? Answer? Zero. Kasi, nung in siya, Two years ago, in-expense na lahat yun. Nasundan? Nakuha, nakuha. O, kuha, ha? Next. O, eh, kaya lang, may alternative future use. Kaya yung depreciation lang for the year. Clear? O, next. Research and development services performed by Star Company for Earth. Sino tayo? Si Earth. O, may nag-provide ng service sa atin. R&D yan? Yes. O, Next. R&D services performed by Earth for Moon. So, sino yung nag-incur? Si Moon. Kay Earth, ay, kay Earth na-earn niya yun. Okay? So, receivable niya yan. Diba? Receivable niya yan from Moon. Tapos may revenue siya. Gets po ba? Okay, so, magkano ang expense? 750 plus 400 plus 300 yung depreciation and then plus 250. Nasunan yan? For total of 1.7 Okay na? Yes O next O number 10 Organization costs Ano ba mga organization costs? Mga establishment costs Di ba? Legal and secretariat costs Okay Ano ba? Pre-opening costs Yan Yung opening of a new Facility Yan Pre-operating costs Launching of a new product Mga promotional mo Di ba? Okay So Pero ano yun? Yung pagka-advertising. Hindi specify na advertising. Hindi yung organization cost, di ba? Ano siya? Advertising. Gets mo? Okay. Ngayon. Anong treatment sa organization cost? Answer? Expense. Kailan po nire-recognize na expense yan? Halimbawa yung establishment cost. Halimbawa, nagtayo tayo ng corporation. Yung legal and secretariat, uh, secretariat cost. Okay? Kunyari, na-incur ng 2019, uh, 2018. Doon kasi tayo nag-plano na magtayo. So, pre-nasses na. Tapos nag-grant yung juridical personality natin, 2019. Kailan mo siya i-recognize? Yung cost na na-incur natin noong 2018, kailan mo i-recognize na expense? 2018-2019. Nakuha ba yung kwento? Tandaan nyo, pag hindi kayo sumasagot, patagal tanda. So, ulit. <laughs> Bignan mo, inuulit kasi, pag hindi kayo sumasagot. Ayun, so, o, organization cost, secretariat services, di ba? Uh, or secretariat cost to establish the corporation na incur ng 2018. Kailan lumabas yung juridical personality, yung granting ng juridical personality? 2019. Kailan i-recognize as expense yung organization cost doon? 2018-2019? Sagot. Diba sabi niya, expense has incurred. Kailan? Answer po would be 2019. Okay. First year of operations. Eh, di ba, doon ka lang pwedeng mag-operate sa 2019. Di ba, yun yung earliest. Kasi nandun pa lang yung juridical personal. Nag-gets mo yan. 
Okay, so yun, specific po nasa past 38. Ano? Okay, so dito sa number 10, o oh, yung, ano po ang organization cost dyan? Yung production equipment PPE, yung license fees, taxes and licenses siya. Hindi siya ano, uh, hindi siya organization cost. Yung advertising cost, advertising expense. So, ang organization cost lang po yung dalawa, 400 at saka yung 1.2. Did you get this? So, ang sagot po dyan is 1.6. Okay na? Sagot tayo ng furies ng intangible asset. 